Welcome back to the garage, welcome back to Neon Airship. You might be wondering why it looks like 2008 in here, and that's because we've magically made this old ass camera work with an SD card. And today I'm going to show you how. I grew up filming a lot of skateboarding videos, and if you found this video, there's a good chance you did too. If you're in that world, you'll know that mini DV camcorders, particularly the Sony VX1000, are still widely used for that classic skate video look and sound. <laughs> it's probably just nostalgia, but I love this look, and a lot of other people seem to as well. I recently decided to transfer a bunch of my old tapes to the PC, and I came across a Canon GL2 on the cheap. I just couldn't resist. I remember being about 16 and lusting after one that my local camera shop had in their window, back when they cost thousands. I love using this camera and I planned on using it to film some stuff with that early 2000s aesthetic, but honestly it's such a faff, especially since I have to pull out my GPU and swap it with a Firewire card every time I want to transfer some footage, not to mention buying tapes. And that's not all, these cameras are super old now and they have a lot of moving parts that are often prone to wear especially the tape mechanism, which can often lead to glitches, or even jam entirely. I thought to myself, it's 2020 now, there must be a better way to make use of these old cameras. And that's when I remembered my old Eosheen Pro DVR. I used this little thing to record FPV drone flights on some goggles that didn't have that capability. The quality was always great, especially considering it cost less than a tenner. The device basically records analog video to a micro SD card. In theory, it should allow me to bypass tapes altogether. The only downside is that it only records audio in mono, but I have a workaround for that too. Using the DVR, an AV cord and an RCA extension cable, I was able to get it working. If you're trying this, it's also very handy to have an RCA to HDMI adapter, but if you have an old TV, or a reversing monitor for a car, they'll do the trick too. For this project, we'll be using the DIY cable that's supplied with the Eosheen DVR. That's the one with the red, black, yellow and white wires and no termination. First we'll need a power source that's around 5 volts. I decided to nick the rechargeable battery from the RC car that I used in the fastest gaming PC video. Solder your battery connector of choice to the red and black wires on the leftmost side of the DIY cable. Then hook up the battery and you should see a red LED illuminate. Once that's done, you can connect the AV out cable to the DVR and test its output to a TV. In my case, I'm hooking it up to an AV to HDMI adapter and then to a spare PC monitor. Once you get in an output, it's important to go into the menu and set the DVR to record in PAL if you're in the UK or NTSC if you're in the US. If you don't do this, you'll get a weird crop on your image or it might not even record at all. You should also set the DVR quality to HD for the best image quality. I think it's set to VGA as standard. I also changed the video length to be unlimited while I was in here. The navigation for these menus isn't very intuitive, but I'll link the manual in the description to make it a bit easier. Now that's done, it's time to connect the video input. Grab your RCA extension lead and chop off the yellow female connector. Expose the two wires inside and solder the yellow to the yellow and the black to the negative wire coming from the battery. If you're using the DVR to record mono audio, you can do the same thing with the white female RCA connector and the white wire from the DVR, but as I won't be using it, I removed the white wire entirely. Then you can hook up your camcorder using its AV out. For the GL2, this is a 3.5mm to RCA cable, but if you're using a VX, then you have a full-size RCA connector on the camera. Connect it back up to the TV and battery, turn on the camcorder and you should have video output into the TV. If that's the case then you're about done. Whack an SD card into the DVR and short press on the rightmost button to start the recording. The red LED should start blinking on the DVR and you'll see a red recording symbol on the screen. For the audio, I want to retain as much quality as possible, so I'll be using my Tascam portable recorder instead. I'm sure the DVR is okay, but I can't imagine there's much shielding in this cheap little device. To hook this up, I just connected the remaining red and white RCA connectors to a 3.5mm to phono cable and plugged it into the mic input on the Tascam. Of course, this means I'll have to sync up my audio in the editing software, but that's what I do for most of my videos anyway. Now, if you're fine with having a spaghetti mess of wires hanging off your camera, then you can consider this project done but I decided to 3D print an enclosure that I could mount to the camera properly. 
This was my first time really designing anything functional, and it involved a bit of bodging and guesswork, but considering it's a first attempt, I'm pretty pleased with the result. Some of my tolerances were a bit tight, but it's nothing I couldn't fix with a heat gun and a bit of wiggling. The enclosure has a sliding door for battery removal, and the DVR just press fits in snugly. I also decided to add an on-off switch to save me having to pull the battery pack out all the time. I'm going to be using my hot shoe mount for the Tascam, and I didn't really want to obscure the tripod threads on the camera. So instead, I just added a series of holes throughout the case, and I can use those to secure it to the camera handle with cable ties. It's actually a really sturdy mount. To neaten up my cables, I wrapped them around the handle and cable tied them into place. I also shortened my audio cable so there's less slack to deal with. I'm super pleased with how this project turned out. You can even transfer your tapes this way by playing back the tapes in VCR mode on the camera and hitting record on the DVR. I was really worried the quality would suffer compared to using a firewire, but it's actually barely noticeable, especially once it's uploaded to YouTube. The main thing I noticed was the footage comes out a little flatter, but if you just bump up the contrast slightly in your editing software, then the footage looks about the same. A couple things to note. You have to press the rightmost button on the DVR to stop the recording before you switch the power off or disconnect the battery. Otherwise, nothing is going to be saved to the SD card at all. You're also going to have to unstretch your clips in your video editor. In a 1080p timeline in Premiere, you have to scale the width to 115 and the height to 150, but it's not a big deal. Thanks very much for watching the video. If you decide to make one of these, then I'd love to see your footage. Links to everything required are in the description. Toodles!